right now might have one sick day or two sick days who we can now guarantee significantly more than that. So I'm talking about a small group of people, a small group of dedicated people relative to the whole city being able to, in one vote, improve the lives of hundreds of thousands of folks. So how can you help? Um, I think being plugged in with a DSA is a key way to do it. You can also be plugged in with Work Strong Austin, which I understand has sign-in sheets um, up front. Block walking in council members' districts, especially key council members' districts, so that they can hear from everyday people in their community um, is critical. Every single council member has apartment complexes in their district that you can quickly knock, door, knock on those doors. And every single council member is going to have people that need uh, paid sick days. And it really is moving to an elected official when they hear from people that are struggling in their own community because that needs to get balanced out by the business owners who are knocking on our doors. We are getting at least one email every single day from somebody that owns a business right now on, on the city council hallway. And there is just that constant drumbeat from that side. And what we need is a flood of people on the other side. So you can contact council members. They've got Twitter, Twitter, Twitter handles. They've got email addresses. Uh, they've got office hours. You can email them. You can meet up with them. Um, you should email your council member and, and participate in the block walks. The easy message is that you just want a strong policy that gives the right to paid sick days to every single working person in the city. That's it. It's that simple. Um, imagine that. We can immediately help hundreds of thousands of people. But as Tim mentioned, it goes far beyond that. Because once we can start, here let me back up for one second. Um, when I was first running for office, I was told to meet with elected officials and former city council members. Because people are like, let's see if this kid actually you know, knows what he wants to do when he grows up. So they told me to go meet with former elected officials. And I met with a city council member who was a city council member pretty recently. And I explained to them what it was that I cared about and why I wanted to run. You do these meetings because you hope that they'll endorse you and that helps somehow. Um, and this person said to me, oh, it sounds like you care about workers' rights and social justice and these race issues. She's like, you should run for school board or something because city council doesn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> and that is exactly the kind of mentality that we are not only breaking here in Austin, but in places all over the country. And once we break the, you know, passing fair chance hiring and telling employers how they could or couldn't discriminate um, against formerly incarcerated people in our community was doing something new. And then all of a sudden showing our community that we can indeed improve the working conditions of hundreds of thousands of people through their city council is further expanding their imagination. If we can vote down a police contract that's unjust and isn't adequately protecting the rights of our community, that is breaking through another barrier. Those are the sorts of barriers we can break through that can give us the imagination to put the biggest affordable housing bond in the history of this city on the ballot next to Sick days and stay for the movement, essentially, is what we need to do. Um, I'm going to close my remarks by talking a little bit about my, uh, my friend, Adi. Uh, he is just a little bit older than me, uh, but we're around the same age. We've known each other and, and been um, working on movement issues together for a few years. Uh, and just over a year ago, he had uh, his first kid. Uh, he's a quiet, introverted guy, but he's a movement guy. Infectious smile, mischievous personality, uh, participates in a lot of a movement where we've been on marches together. But around the same time, he was suddenly diagnosed with ALS, uh, which is Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, today, uh, he has to walk with a cane, uh, and he can't pick up his you know, 18-month-old son to put him in his lap. He needs help to do that. Um, and uh, Adi, uh, just a couple of days ago, got in a plane, went to DC, and refused to move from in front of his Congress member's door until he got dragged away. Uh, and his closing words and his closing speech on Facebook Live, which a bunch of us were watching, was that life is short and these bastards want to make it short. And that, the other side, what he said is essentially the other side is doing their work uh, to make our society more unequal um, and to make essentially, as I laid out at the beginning of this, people's lifespans more unequal. And that's why it's our responsibility in this moment even though it's been an exhausting year for so many of us, to continue pushing on the other side. 
um, because there's no way if we do not all put ourselves together to push on the other side. And so if Adi was able to take his cane and walk up those steps to get in front of Daryl Ice's door, then the least we can do is to block walk like hell, get paid sick days passed, and eventually get to Tim's deal with Medicare at home. really hard uh, this year. I know a lot of you have worked really, really hard. Um, and so something I told one of my staff members this week when we were talking about the year to sort of keep their spirits up about how much work there is left to do, I uh, found out that Dolores Huerta was arrest, uh, has been arrested 24 times. Uh, MLK in his very short life was arrested 30 times. And John Lewis has been arrested 46 times. And I know some of us are still in single digits, so we still have to <laughs>